Let's move now to boxing. The South African professional boxer Ludumo Lamati from Mdanzani in the Eastern Cape is being closely monitored in hospital and taken care of by doctors in Belfast in Northern Ireland. He was injured during a fight against Englishman Nick Ball. Now the 31-year-old held the IBO Super Bantamweight title from June 2021 to May 2022. As an amateur, he competed at the 2011 World Championships. Now to hear what what exactly happened? We are joined live via Zoom by his trainer, Larry Weinstein. Larry, thank you so much for making time. We were all shocked um, this past weekend in that final round, two minutes, 15 seconds into it, Ludumo collapsing in the ring. What exactly happened? So uh, Ludumo fought his fight and it was a very close fight, although it, towards the end, the Englishman started to rough him up, and it was a very, very dirty fight. Um, but going into the, the, the eighth round, Leduma started to want to mix it with him. And uh, Pumzi and Colin said to him, Guy, you got to just box him, don't. He wants you to mix it with him, don't mix it with him. And then uh, they said, if you don't, we're going to take you out. Then he, he, in the ninth and tenth round, uh, in the tenth and the eleventh round, he came back nicely, and he caught him plenty blo body blows. And in the last round, he, he was holding Leduma against the weight, the ropes, and, and he, was, he was taking advantage and hitting him, and the ref was doing nothing about it. So we decided to throw the towel in, which we did. He, he then turned, the ref stopped the fight, he came to the corner, and as he came to the corner, he, he sat down and he said, why did they stop the fight? And after that, he then just collapsed after that. He, it, was never, it wasn't from a blow that he received at that point, and he never fell where the, where the ref stopped the fight. He walked to the corner and we thought, oh, well, you know, it was a hard fight. He did his best. He didn't disgrace us. He carried the flag. And then he, then he collapsed uh, in the corner. And the paramedics were in there within minutes. We put him, the, the ambulance was ready. We took him into the ambulance and I went with him to the hospital where they did a scan and where they then uh, went undergo tests and immediately decided they found, found his mother and they just had to do um, one or two a bit of surgery and they induced a coma. And he went into a coma and he was there for 72 hours. He will be in the coma. We, we asked them people, what, what should we do? They said, best you go home. There's nothing you can do here for the next few days. And even when he comes out the coma, it might take a week or so to make sure that everything's fine and we, to get him to a position where we understand what, what the actual damage is. So we arranged with some good friends of ours, family friends. They're there with him. We came back and we're ready to go back at any stage and take his mom and his girlfriend and family with whatever the, the outcome is. And, and that's where we are. It's, it's been very difficult. Oh, so sorry, Larry. I can just see the emotion on your face. This truly is a difficult time, you know, especially because he was coming into this fight, you know, uh, with that unbeaten record. What was his bill of health going into it? Are you able to give us the assurance that he really looked the part to take on Nick at the time? It's the best camp he's ever had. He, they, they extended the tournament by another two weeks. So it wasn't like it was a short time he had to, to get fit. He was focused. He was in the zone. He was this was what he wanted all his life, and he wanted to prove it. And honestly, he was in top, top shape. And anyone who saw him sparring at the gym, he would train, spar, do uh, heavy, heavy training, run in the evenings. He, he made his weight the day before, uh, even a, a week before he was on his weight, which was not normal. Normally, uh, he used to battle at Super Bantam where three, he had to do three kilos, five kilos, he was spot on. He said he's not taking any chances and, and he was waiting for this moment. Sure. And uh, of course, I just received, you know, uh, a message that says his vital signs are stable. We are hoping that they'll slowly stop the sedation from tomorrow onwards, but it's a process that will take some time. And you've, of course, asked the South Africans to continue to pray for him and keep him in his thoughts and, and prayers. Maybe just give us an update on how he is at the moment. Is he getting the best medical treatment in Ireland? Um, is there a chance of him coming back to South Africa? How is he looking at the moment? I promise you, we were we were so so thankful for the the medical attention. The medic the medicals were in the ring within minutes. They put him in the ambulance. I went within five minutes. He was at 
at the hospital. They pulled him in. They did the, the, the brain scan. They did what they had to do and then took him into ICU, put him into the, um, into the uh, in, induced coma. And people, I've spoken to people all over, friends of mine that are in the medical profession, they said the best thing they could have done was the speed in which it was done. Because normally when it when it's takes long to do, then there's a problem. But they, they said what, with what they've heard and what they've seen, that, that, the, that Royal Hospital in Ireland is unbelievable. I promise you, it's, it really is something to behold. And we just thank God that those, those people, those doctors, and, and they, they have your, you know, they have the patient's uh, interest at heart and they drop everything and they just took him in and they came out and told us, listen, we can't talk to you. We need to speak to his mother because you're not the next of kin. We then got hold of Laduma's mom and they phoned her and then they, she then gave them the, the, the authority and gave them the mandate to speak to me. And I've been phoning them. And when the phone rings, they say, is that you, Mr. Weinstein? I promise you, you cannot believe they know him and the uh, Leduma is doing a lot better, but we will not know until he comes off the coma, the induced coma. And people are asking, you know, what's happening? And everyone thinks there's different information. We put it out on the Boxing Five communication. Whatever we get, everyone's getting the same because you don't want rumors going around yeah. because we want people to have the same information and just understand that, uh, the, you know, he's in good hands and he was... He had such good support in Ireland. We had the whole team there. We had all the Boxing Five people there, Colin, myself, Ria's my partner, my son, and Pumzi and Laduma. People were all in awe at what we, having traveled with a team like that and, they, and what was going on. Sure, Larry, uh, thank you so much for making time. Uh, this is a story truly that has shocked the entire boxing fraternity and, and the entire South Africans. We are going to keep a close eye on this. We are definitely hoping that uh, Luduma recovers, recovers speedily and gets back to that one thing that he loves so much, and that is to be in the ring and that is to box. Thank you so much for making time. And of course, uh, Luduma, popularly known as 9 millimeter. Currently at the Belfast uh, in, in Northern Ireland in hospital, he was of course hospitalized after collapsing in the ring. He was uh, fighting against Nick Ball. We will keep you updated on the story, but the good signs that we are hearing and the good information that is coming through is that his vital signs are really recovering well.